Welcome to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to educating and empowering men to address erectile dysfunction, improve confidence, and enhance the satisfaction in their relationships. This podcast is brought to you by ErectionIQ.com. Learn more at ErectionIQ.com. Welcome to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. I am Mark Goldberg, Certified Sex Therapist. I am deeply passionate about working with men like you to help resolve their ED. My name is Casey. I am the podcast producer here at ED Radio. Today we're going to be discussing premature ejaculation and how it relates to ED. So Mark, let's just start the discussion off by you simply defining for us what premature ejaculation is. So Casey, this is a it's it's a tricky question and I'll I'll explain why. Premature ejaculation has gone through a number of definitions. So let's start with two definitional pieces, or lack of definition rather, to the term premature ejaculation. So the diagnostic criteria for premature ejaculation takes on an idea that is based on penetrative sex. The amount of time it takes from the point of penetration until a man reaches ejaculation is the period of time that we are looking at, which in and of itself is a little bit limiting because there are many forms of sexual activity that do not include penetrative sex, that a man can also experience forms of premature ejaculation, and that sort of has not been included in the official definition, something that I do believe over time will will change if it has not been changed already. That's number one. The other definitional piece is, well, how much time are we talking about? What exactly constitutes premature ejaculation? Now, I'm aware that there's a lot of anxiety that men generally can experience with regard to how long they are supposed to last. So there are no exact definitions. That's the truth. There is no exact time period. So there are several different research bodies and other overseeing organizations that have put certain timestamps on to define what would be considered premature ejaculation and what would be outside of that range. And I would say that largely the time ranges from about one minute or less to three minutes or less. You know, some of the lower ranges are under one minute would be premature ejaculation. Anything above that diagnostically would not be considered premature ejaculation. And there are other things that range up as high as three minutes and under would be considered premature ejaculation. And anything more than three minutes would not fit the definition of premature ejaculation. So Mark, what would you say is the root cause of premature ejaculation or what are some of the causes of it in general? So premature ejaculation definitely has both physical and mental components. There are a number of subcategories of premature ejaculation that I think will be helpful if we better define so we can make sense of what seems to be a little bit more medical or what seems to be a little bit more mental related. So there are first category is considered lifelong premature ejaculation, which means that a man has been experiencing this from the time that he has begun sexual activity throughout his life. And he consistently experiences premature ejaculation. Generally speaking, there's a medical component to that. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It could mean anatomically, it could mean uh, something in the pelvic floor, it could you know, mean something in the endocrine system, it could mean a lot of different things that are not necessarily problems, but might just be a way of being. And that's called lifelong premature ejaculation, tends to have more of a medical component and it tends to be a little bit less mental, um, at least in terms of where it comes from. The second category is called acquired premature ejaculation, which means that at some point, a man begins to experience premature ejaculation when he had previously not experienced it. So there are two ways that I look at this. These are the sub sub subcategories that I think of. There's a quick onset, which certainly needs a, a, a medical consult with a doctor. There could be you know, multiple reasons why a man goes from having, let's say, a satisfactory time period from the time that, that he engages in sexual activity until he reaches ejaculation, and that rapidly stops. So that could be an indicator of uh, some medical conditions, and that would definitely have to be examined by a doctor. Now, the other category that I think of is, is a slower onset, so that this is something that it kind of, over time, a man sees that his 
what's called clinically the ejaculatory latency period, which is the, the time from sexual activity start until ejaculation, that that slowly begins to get smaller. So that oftentimes has mental components to it. The third category is subjective premature ejaculation, which means that a man may not ejaculate beyond that one minute to three minute mark, so he doesn't categorically fit into the premature ejaculation construct, but he's distressed. This is a distressing condition. So it could be either him or potentially a partner is distressed by the amount of time it takes to ejaculate. That oftentimes is a couple's issue, could be a couple's therapy issue, it could be an individual issue. A lot more a, a lot more often that is a, a mental health or a mental related issue as opposed to a physical issue. And the fourth is variable. All right, so variable premature ejaculation means that a man is experiencing premature ejaculation at times with certain settings and other times not. Uh, sometimes men will experience this with one particular partner, but they don't experience it if they're with a different partner. So this oftentimes has mental aspects to it in terms of what is causing a man to rapidly ejaculate in one setting while he doesn't do it in another. So how is ED, erectile dysfunction, and premature ejaculation, sometimes commonly just called PE, how are they intertwined and connected if, if they are at all? So I'll I'll answer the latter part of the question first. There there seems to be a correlation between the two. I think there's an estimate that 30% of premature ejaculation cases will result in erectile dysfunction. And and it may be in reverse as well, that 30% of erectile dysfunction cases originally experience some level of premature ejaculation. So there's about a 30% crossover between the two cases. What the correlation exactly is, is subject of debate. So I'm hesitant to put forth any particular theory. I have a way that I think about the overlap between premature ejaculation and erectile dysfunction. The one piece that I will say is one of the things that I certainly am asking men that I'm working with who are experiencing both premature ejaculation and erectile dysfunction is what came first. So I do think that there is significance when we're looking at if there's some correlation between the two, if premature ejaculation came first, which led to the experience of erectile dysfunction, that may mean one thing versus if a man had initially had erectile dysfunction and then ended up with premature ejaculation when he was still able to gain or maintain an erection. That might mean something else. So there there is a correlation between the two. Whether they are being caused by one another is a subject of debate. But certainly if a man is experiencing premature ejaculation that has led to erectile dysfunction or vice versa, it's important that if you're going to address these things that you have an awareness of what you experience first in order. Does Does that make sense, Casey? Yes, that definitely makes sense. So I, I want to talk more about the treatment options for a man facing premature ejaculation. What's out there? What can be done? So Casey, there are a number of treatments available for premature ejaculation. I'll break them down into four categories. So the first intervention is medicinal. There are a number of medications available. Some of them are off-label use, but some of them are, they're not off-label use, so they certainly are in clinical trials that do seek to extend the period of ejaculation. So one option is to utilize a medication and a, a doctor will be able to assist a man in trying to find out what medication would be helpful. The second option available, there's a series of numbing creams and sprays that are available. I would absolutely advise any man to consult with their doctor before using these. They, some of them are very powerful and uh, they are effective. I, I will mention that one of the downsides is that this ultimately decreases a man's pleasure because you can't really feel much of anything. So the decreased sensitivity um, will help to increase the amount of time that it takes to ejaculate It may also impact other things like libido because there isn't a lot of pleasure involved in that activity. But that is a treatment option that is available. Some men do find that to be satisfactory. 
Other men struggle with the, the issue that I brought up. The third approach is behavioral. And what I mean by that is there are a number of exercises that men can engage in to try to train themselves to delay ejaculation and increase that that time period with, again, physiological clues and by desensitizing themselves. And uh, some of them can be can be effective. Um, a sex therapist can be helpful in in helping to guide that treat that part of the treatment process and helping to tailor these exercises in a way that makes sense in both an individual and in a partner or in a couple setting. And the fourth is the mental aspects. So. You know, performance anxiety, anxiety are topics that we've already covered on the podcast. They do apply to ejaculation as well. So if a man is really worried that he's going to be disappointing his partner and all he's thinking about is not to ejaculate, not to ejaculate, and he's really preoccupied with that, oftentimes he will ejaculate very, very quickly. He'll feel a lot of pressure. He'll be worried that, that the relationship might end as a result of the ejaculation. And all of that anxiety... Uh, can work in the opposite direction and can be a part or a factor of what causes that ejaculation. So the fourth approach here is to address this with sex therapy, but looking a little bit less at the behaviors and a little bit more at the emotional and cognitive or, or thought space that a man occupies when he's engaged in sexual activity. With that in mind, Mark, is premature ejaculation purely mental or is there a physical component involved so just like ed like any other sexual dysfunction it's hard to say that anything is purely mental it's a physical experience it's a physical activity it involves muscle contractions it involves a whole slew of physical components so i I would be hesitant to say that anything is purely caused by a mental component I think there are situations that the solution to the problem can be addressed just by looking at mental factors. In other words, medication sprays wouldn't be necessary because the mental components are powerful enough that if a man successfully addresses those, he will be able to satisfactorily extend his latency period. And like I was saying before... There are situations where a man knows that in setting A, he doesn't have any problem in terms of the time it takes to ejaculate, and in setting B, he experiences rapid ejaculation. That would tend to not be a tremendously physical problem, but would carry more mental components, if that makes sense. Makes sense to me, Mark. And I want to talk about the role or the possible role of sex therapy in all of this can it help men that are facing premature ejaculation? Can sex therapy help? So I think with, with premature ejaculation in particular, I, I think sex therapy is a very appropriate service to be incorporating into the treatment, and I'll, I'll explain why. Premature ejaculation oftentimes is a partner-driven condition, meaning if a man is ejaculating quickly on his own with masturbation, generally it's not overly distressing. Doesn't mean it's it's like that for everybody, but generally, right, if it takes a minute or a minute and a half or two minutes, it still creates a very sexually satisfying experience. Where premature ejaculation becomes a challenge very often is in a partnered setting. So men will look for a solution so that their partners are not upset. But oftentimes, when premature ejaculation has already occurred in a relationship, it already begins to impact the relationship. It impacts the way a man thinks about himself in the context of the relationship. It can really open up the door to a whole slew of more complex anxieties and relationship challenges that sex therapy is really able to be there both for the individual male who is struggling and to incorporate his partner to be able to come up with a plan to address the premature ejaculation, but also to ensure that the relationship is not only protected from potential damage, but can also thrive and grow through that process. And that's something that that you only get through sex therapy and through a more broad process, as opposed to just addressing the medical 
aspects of this condition. That makes a lot of sense. So I want to ask about broaching the subject of premature ejaculation. It's one thing to listen to a podcast about it, but then it's a whole nother thing to actually have discussions about it face to face with someone or maybe over a Zoom call now that we've entered kind of a new era in in the way therapy is conducted. Mark, what would you say to men that may be a little embarrassed to admit that they have an issue with premature ejaculation and and they're not really sure where to begin seeking help or where to start talking about it with someone that might be able to help them? I'll just make mention of the of the technology that has become available to us. So I think that is something that is actually very helpful because I think it takes down some of the intensity and some of the awkwardness. Yes, there's there's what to talk about in terms of therapy being done over Zoom versus therapy in person. But I do think that this opens up the door for many, many people to be able to access services that they, one, otherwise would not be able to access, or two, right, would feel uncomfortable directly face-to-face with somebody. So I, I think that that is, that is ultimately going to be helpful moving forward as, as we progress in, in different ways that we treat these conditions. If a man is feeling embarrassed, I, I, I get it. I understand. These are really hard things to talk about. So certainly when it comes to premature ejaculation, it's important that men understand this is very common. There's not necessarily anything wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with your head. There's nothing wrong with any of that. This is really an opportunity to make things better. It's an opportunity to enhance your relationship. It's an opportunity to not experience the discomfort and the anxiety and to be able to get back to a pleasurable sexual experience. It could be awkward to talk about these things. What I found is for the overwhelming majority of men who actually make it to my office or get on a a Zoom call to do a session, they find it to be surprisingly not awkward and surprisingly comfortable. And it's difficult to get over that initial hump, but there are people out there that can really help make a huge difference and help things just permanently be a whole lot better if you're just willing to take that initial risk and reach out. It's very well said. It can it can feel very intimidating until you actually do it like so many things in life. Once you're actually doing it, it's not as bad as what you had originally thought or feared. Mark, do you have any other final thoughts for us on today's topic of ED and premature ejaculation? The one additional thought I would say is if a man notices this pattern, notices that he's experiencing premature ejaculation, the earlier you reach out for help, the easier it is to make the changes. I would encourage any guy who's struggling with this and certainly has an awareness that this is a variable form of premature ejaculation. It's not happening all the time. It's not happening everywhere. To reach out, find a therapist, find a sex therapist, somebody who has an expertise in this area, make that connection earlier. Because if you make those changes earlier on in the process, you're going to avoid compounding anxiety, relationship problems, and you're going to be able to get this resolved to a satisfactory point a whole lot quicker. Thanks for listening to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. For more information on today's topic and understanding how the mind impacts erectile dysfunction, please visit ErectionIQ.com. That's ErectionIQ.com.